Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Okay. Like, is my mic on? How are you? Good, 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 good. Hey, uh, we're in our series, It's Not Personal, which we're looking at our personal relationship with Jesus Christ, but how we're not supposed to keep it personal, that we're actually a, a walking billboard of Jesus and who he is in this world. And uh, so I want you guys to grab a Bible or device and turn to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is basically, if you had a Bible, you open it up in the middle of that Psalms, you go right, and you're going to hit Jeremiah somewhere along there. It's a fairly significant book of the Bible. Hey, while you're doing that, so we have, we have um, sponsored over 380 compassion children in Togo, Africa. Uh, our very first year in existence, uh, we, we sponsored, I can't remember how many kids, but we were one of the only churches in Colorado. Here's our first year that would be considered a 100 percenter which meant that we 100% sponsored every child that was in the village in Togo that we were able to do. And then a couple years ago, we did another village in Togo, Africa. And so now we have over 380 kids. Well, I tell you all that, one, because it's exciting, boom, boom, boom. But the other one is because we're actually going to take a missions trip down to Togo, not down, well, I guess it's down from us, yeah, Togo, Africa, and uh, if you're at all interested, so you're, we're going to do vacation Bible school, we're going to do some construction pro process, we're going to see how Compassion International works, and you're also going to be able to visit your child, if you sponsored a child, you'll be able to visit that child, and so we're getting all that together, there's going to be an interest meeting next week, so next week after the second service, so if you're interested in being interested, go to the interest meeting and just check it out. It doesn't cost you anything, but they would like for you to sign up online. So go to our webpage and go uh, at the scroll to the bottom. It has a mission section and there's a little button that you can push and just say, I am interested in going to the interest meeting. Okay. And, and you do that. And so it's next week at the end of the second service, which is this service uh, next week. So you get to check that out. Okay. Let's get started. I'm excited about today. I just love this whole idea that we today we're trying to figure out how do we discover our purpose in life? Because you, there's, there's more to you than just you. And there's more to discover. And part of that is finding out our purpose in life. So how many of you guys uh, remember Mr. Potato Head? Okay, yeah. They still have Mr. Potato Head, pretty awesome. You know, you get these little pieces, you, you, you got this little plastic potato, but you can actually use a real potato if you wanted to, and you stick eyeballs in there, and a little nose, and a mustache, and ears, and a hat, and you got Mr. Potato Head. He's so cool. He's totally cool. And then they came out with, with even cooler, Mrs. Potato Head. Man, she's got a little bonnet on going on. She's got carries a purse, and, and she's got big lips and, and all this different stuff. And then, then they have Tortilla Head. Uh, so it's Tortilla Potato Head. No, you can, you, can put those pieces, you can put those pieces on anything, right? Tortilla, uh, omelet, omelet head, whatever you wanted to do. But, uh, but the cool thing about Mr. Potato Head is that if you get kind of bored, like, okay, I'm tired of putting in my eyes, but now you can put the hand where the eyes are, and you can put an eye where the foot should be, and a foot where the hat should be, and just scrambled up Mr. Potato Head, all mixed up Mr. Potato Head, whatever you want to do, you can do that, and it's so cool. But here's the thing, is I think a lot of people think God is like Mr. Potato Head, that we can kind of mix and match what we like and don't like about God. And that we can sit down and go, you know, I don't really like this part. I'm just going to get rid of that. Or I'm going to put God and going to make him and form him in the way that I want, in my image. But listen, people, God has never changed. And he does not change. And if there's things about him that you don't like, well, tough, tough. You know, that you, you don't get to pick and choose. If, if you think you just want to focus on grace and not the law, well, then you're missing something. God is both grace and he's also the law. You know, God is mercy, but, he, but he's also judgment. And, and, and so we can't mix and match what we want about God. He is God, and you are not. And so before we go any further, because the word is sometimes very tough to digest, and so we need the Holy Spirit to help us understand uh, God's word. So let's pray. Ah, Lord, you are the word. 
as we discovered last week in many ways, and we also know that you are truth, and you are grace, and you're the law. And uh, we just want to trust in you today. And so as we study your word, Lord, would you make it come alive, make it clear to us that we can understand it better and better. Even at this moment, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, Jeremiah is uh, sometimes been called, for, for a long time, but called the weeping prophet. You ever heard that? So Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. Why? Well, because so much he's lamenting over Israel. He's, he's crying over his people, you know, and God loves Israel, loves Israel. In fact, he said, all those nations that do not bless Israel will not be blessed themselves, and those that curse Israel will be cursed themselves. God loves Israel, but Israel so often rebels against God, kind of like you and me. We can know God, we can love God, but we still have a tendency to rebel. And what Israel would often do is they'd have this time of, 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 of where they, they just literally fell on their knees. And as a nation, they're like, oh, forgive us, God. We've been, so, we've been so unworthy. And he forgives them and he does something awesome for them. And then the next, it often would be the next generation would then rebel against God. You know, and so Jeremiah's role was to go, and he'd have to go to these kings, and he'd have to go to the people. He says, if you guys don't straighten up, there's going to be calamity. God loves you, but just like a son, there's going to be, there's going to be times where, where uh, you need to be punished or whatever so that you finally turn back to him. And so Jeremiah would do that. And now here's an example that we're going to look at, Jeremiah chapter 18, and we're going to start with verse 1. And uh, this is what it says. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So a potter's house, that would be somebody who makes pottery. You know, like the little wheel, and they got their foot going on, they got the clay, and they're making a pot or a bowl or whatever. So he goes, go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted or torn down or destroyed. And if that nation, I warn, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I'd planned. And if at another time I announce that the nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. So here's God, and he's sitting down, and he says, Jeremiah, I want you to go down and go to this potter. And, and he, as Jeremiah's looking, he sees the, the clay, the pot maker, all of a sudden goes, this isn't working at all, you know, and I'm going to start over from scratch like that. And so, uh, and he says, uh, isn't that the same thing that my will? I'm God. I'm God. And if a nation or a people or a people group, uh, if, they, if they recant of their sin, then I will bless them. I, I can do that. Or if, I, if I'm going to say that, that I'm going to bless them, but then they go a wrong direction, I can pull my blessing away from them. I'm God. In fact, that's our very first point. So if you're taking notes, uh, the first point is this, is that for us to discover our purpose in life, for us to understand best how, how we can work in our life, the, 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 how to discover our purpose is to realize this, that God is God and I am not. God is God and I am not. Now, thank God God is God, and thank God He never changes, and thank God that He doesn't change things on, on a whim without really, you know, thinking through things. Thank God God is God, and I am not, because if it's up to me, I go all the time on somebody, you know, I go, beam, flick you off, you know, but God, God in His mercy and His grace and, 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 and all the way that He saves people and loves people, He's just so awesome. Thank God God is God, and that I am not. And, and for us to really discover our purpose, we need to understand that. Uh, you know, this, this helps me to realize my purpose in life. Is my purpose is not about me. My purpose is about God. Uh, and, and, and you've heard me say this phrase before, but I'm going to put it up here. 
No God, no purpose. But no God, no purpose. You know, no wonder so many people are killing them, killing each other or raping and doing these things because they don't know God or they don't believe there is a God. I mean, it, it fascinates me how many people can go through life. I mean, I guess I was the same way, but went through, go through life and not even, you know, seek after God. I mean, he's so obvious everywhere, you know, and, and in creation and all these different things. And so, so many people don't, don't even seek him out. But here's the thing. If you know God, you'll know purpose. But if you don't know God, then you don't really have purpose. And, and it can really be uh, disconcerting in, in various ways. Let's look again at, at, at uh, we're going to look at verse 6. It says this. It says, uh, he said, can I not do with you, oh, no, I want to look at verse 8. No, I want to look at verse 6. Okay. <laughs> See? I'm not God. I, don't, I can't remember where I'm at. Where, no, we're going to look at verse 6. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. The thing is, is that God is God. And we need to trust in him. Not ourselves, but we need to trust in him. Really, we're much more like Mr. Potato Head. You know, he's the one that says, this is where I'm going to put your eye. And this is how I'm going to form you. And this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to create you and put you in a certain way, exactly how I want. You know, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we kind of mess up on that all the time. Uh, another verse that kind of goes into here is, in, is, is uh, in Isaiah. And so look at this verse in Isaiah. It's going to be up on the screen. Isaiah 45. It says, what sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does a clay pot argue with the maker? Does a clay dispute with the one who shapes it, saying, Stop! You're doing it all wrong! Does the pot exclaim, How clumsy can you be? I love that. Who sits around and goes, What are you doing? Who are you? Who are you? You know, what pot sits down and goes, You're not making me right! This is just screwed up! Stop doing it! Like, no. He's God, and he's got it, and he's God, and we are to just follow in his footsteps. And so, listen, if you don't, you know, according to this verse, it sits down, if you try to control your life and not let God control your life, if you, if you try to do everything, you're going to be out of control. Because here's the thing, people don't do what you want them to do, and so then you're going to have sorrow, always sorrow, trying to control your kids. Try to control your spouse. Try to control things in the environment. Try to control these different things. If you try to do all this control, you're going to be out of control because you cannot control. You just can't. So you need to say, God, I'm just going to go with the flow of you. And I'm going to seek out your will and seek out your purpose. And that's what we need to do. So our, our first thing, if you want to discover your purpose, is to realize that you're not God. Okay? God is God and you're not. But the second thing is this, is that we need to realize uh, that our main purpose in my life is to have a relationship with the Creator. We have lots of purposes. So you, you, you could say, hey, my purpose is to have children. You know, my purpose is to be an accountant. My purpose is to have fun or whatever. You know, you can have purposes. But our main purpose is to have a relationship with our Creator. If you get nothing else out of here, you got that. My main purpose is to have a relationship with God, a personal relationship with God. That's my main purpose. That's what God did. God made sure that he sent his son. You know, the reason, like communion. We're going to celebrate communion next week. Uh, we can always have, we have communion baskets up here. You can take them at any time on any Sunday uh, that you want. But next week's our communion service. And a big part of that communion is, is really understanding and discovering that we are to have communion with God, community with God, a personal relationship with Christ. What, what, what God did is he sent his son to take on our sin, to die on the cross, so that we can have a personal relationship with our creator. That's a big deal. 
I mean, we can kind of sometimes take it for granted, but the idea is that we can have a personal, but we're not supposed to keep it personal. You know, wherever we go, Jesus goes, right? But, but here's the thing. I have a personal relationship with my creator, um, and that's a big deal. You know, uh, one of the challenges that we, we, we gave uh, during this spiritual growth campaign is to read the Gospel of John. So I don't know if you're doing that. I am. I'm reading the Gospel of John. I've read it many times, but man, it's like I'm rediscovering it, you know, uh, and, and I'm just, it, the, the, the words come out. But why did I sit down and say, hey, one of the things I want you guys to do is to read the Gospel of John during this campaign, because I want you to grow in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And the Gospel of John does an excellent job of really revealing who Jesus is. And, and so to, to grow in your spiritual growth, you know, to get, to get uh, connected with your creator. Read scripture. You know, the, the other thing is life groups. Why are we so big into life groups? You know, isn't just church enough? No! Church is where we gather to celebrate who God is, but we don't get to know other people very well. We don't really get our discipleship on in here. That's what we do in, in uh, life groups. It's really, it's a big part of our discipleship program. We have next steps, but, but, but man, doing life together with other believers, seeing our faults, seeing our, our, our things that we cheer about, seeing how we connect with each other, that's a big deal so that we can grow in this personal relationship with my creator. The, the third thing, so the, the first one is that if I'm going to discover my, my, you know, my purpose in life, I need to realize first and foremost, I am not God. Thank God I'm not God. But the second thing is I need my number one purpose is to have a personal relationship with my creator. But the third, third thing is this, is that trust in God's ability to shape me for his purpose. Now, now look at that. Trust that God can shape me, mold me, just, just like that, that pot, you know, that he can do these things. I got to trust him. So these words are selected purposely. Trust God and that he can mold and shape me for his purpose. Whose purpose? His. Again, my biggest main purpose in my life is to get a relationship with creator. So when you accept Jesus into your heart, you're, you're connecting with the creator. But I need to now realize that during the process, he's going to mold and shape me for his purposes. And that's a big deal. Let's look at verse 4 again. Okay, verse 4. I got it right this time. It says, But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so that the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Now understand this. God's goal and God's role is to shape us and do that. See, God's more concerned about your character than he is about your comfort. God is more concerned about your character than he is your comfort. And so sometimes in the molding and shaping and things like this, it can hurt. Let's just be honest. You know, it's hard to be shaped. And You ever go to a chiropractor and they go, you know, like, oh, okay, that shouldn't have happened. But, you know, oh, I, I feel better, uh, actually. I feel a lot better. You know, so there's a thing where he wants to, he cares more about your character than he does your comfort. And so he's going to mold and shape, but we need to trust him in that. And there's a couple ways. So if you notice that, that it said that this, this clay was marred, and so the, the, the potter worked it again and then started to do some things, right? So he's shaping it and doing that properly. And in a big way, you know, that, that seems uncomfortable to, to have that happen. So, but it, when I look at it is, I go, something within that clay, it said it was marred. Something within that clay was hindering the potter from being able to do what he wanted to do. And so I believe in the same way, because this is an illustration about us as people, that we're marred and we hinder what God wants to do. So what are some hindrances that we, we bring that keep God from wanting to be, being able to do what he wants to do. So I have three of them that I came up with. One of them is uh, being hardened, too hard. 
you know, you, you, you get some clay and you're trying to shape it and it's too hard. And so the potter has to add some water or whatever. Well, I look at it like us. We often go through life with hard hearts, you know. I mean, I know my heart was so hardened towards God before I became a believer for sure, you know. So how do you harden your heart? How, well, you keep saying no to God. God says, I want to do this. You go, no. And, 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 and you go, God says, I want you to do this. No. And after a while, your heart gets hardened towards what God wants to do within you. Think about your life. There's a lot of things that you know God is telling you to do. He's telling you to, to stop this sin, or he's telling you to read the Gospel of John, or he's telling you you need to be consistent at church, and you need to, you need to be, no! And then after a while, we just, we have a hard heart. And it's just hard for God to penetrate that because he's a gentleman, and he gives us free will. And if you freely want to keep saying no to God, God, the gentleman, will say, okay, okay, then you deal with your life because you keep saying no to me. And so there you go. I, 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 think, I think that consistently can keep us from really paying attention to what God's doing. I mean, what we want is we want God to open up 10 doors and then we get to pick whatever door we want to walk through. No, he goes, nope, there's one door. Here it is. Go. No. Go. No, go! You know, what, you know, whatever. The second thing, we can have a hard heart. The other one, we can have an improper consistency or a wrong consistency. Oh, you, okay, let's say overwatered. You know, you're just kind of watery. You're watered down. You're floppy. You know, you're that, you're that clay that, that, that's trying to mold and shape and makes it into a pot and all of a sudden it goes... <laughs> you know? And, and, and that, that's that, that floppiness, that, that watered down. You know, and, and I think we can really do that sometimes where we don't have, you know, any convictions in our life. You know, you know the difference between a belief and a conviction? A, a, a belief uh, you, you hold on to, or a belief you hold. A conviction is something that holds you. A belief you hold. I mean, we can change our beliefs all the time. I had beliefs back when I was in high school that I don't have anymore. It's just a belief, but a conviction is something that holds you. It's something you're willing to die for, you know? So here's the question. Is your Christian faith a belief or is it a conviction? Is your faith a belief? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I believe, yeah. Or is it a conviction? something I'm going to die for. I know for a fact that Jesus is God because I've researched him and I've studied and I've experienced and I know him so well. That's the difference between a belief and a conviction. You know, it's just a good thing. Okay, let's go on to number three. So the first one is this, is that I can have a hard heart. I can be hard clay that I can't, you know, not pliable. Then I can also just be watered down and not good for anything. And the third one is this, is that sometimes the clay has pieces of debris. Did you see how it said it was marred? I, I get a picture. I mean, I don't know if you ever worked with clay or did pot. When I was in high school, we had pottery class, you know. So you had that little wheel, and, and you learn how to do all that stuff. And every once in a while, you get, like, some type of debris or, like, hard clay, a little chunk of clay in there or, like, a rock or something. And when you're spinning that, all of a sudden you go, all of a sudden you just see this, 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 circle around your pot that you're doing because it, it was marred. It had, had a piece of junk in there. So you try to get that out. But if there's too much of that, too much of that going on in there, it's like almost impossible. You just have to like start over. And I get this picture of this is that when it says it's marred, it's like there's this sin in our lives that keeps God from being able to do what he wants to do because we got this chunk of sin in our life that keeps us from being all that we're meant to be. And, and it could be a problem. Look at Jeremiah 18, 4 again. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, so that the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. You know, and, and so we, we got, we, we, here's what I look at. We have sin in our life. And God, God in his grace and his mercy, he forgives us. You know, that forgiveness was given to us at the cross. Uh, it, we've conquered that. But, but man, oh man, 
There's so much that God sits down and goes, get that out of your life. But what I love about God is he's a God of second chances. He's a God of third chances, fifth chances, a hundred chances. I mean, I do not receive that which I deserve. Thank God. Right? You should think of all the time. In fact, that's what worship is really about. It's just kind of going, God, thank you that I don't get what I deserve. I don't know why my voice just got so high. I guess I was trying to be a woman. So, (laughs) thank God I don't get what I deserve. You know, it's so true. We should worship God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength because he's a God of second chances and third and fifth and tenth and one hundredth chances. He's that God. And so here's the thing. We need to realize that first and foremost, I need to know that God is God and I am not. Thank God. I also need to realize that my number one purpose in life is to get in a personal relationship with him. And the third thing is, is I need to realize that God can mold and shape me and I need to trust him in that. Because he cares more about my character than he does my comfort. And so I can harden my heart. I can be just a wacky mess of watered down faith with no convictions. And I have sin in my life. In all those cases, I need to allow the potter, the wonderful God, to move and shape me and mold me to make me like his son, Jesus Christ. Because that's ultimately the goal, to become like Jesus. Amen? Well, let's pray. And if you have not received Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be able to do that also. But let's pray. Lord God, thank you that you're God and that we are not. Thank you that we can place ourselves into your hands as you mold and shape us to become more like your son, Jesus Christ. Because that's ultimately the goal, to become like Jesus. And so we know we get in the way. I know for a fact I get in your way. And we want to be shaped right, correctly, to become more like your son. Well, heads are bowed. If you have not received Jesus as your Savior and you'd like to do that today, I want to give you an opportunity. And I'm not going to ask you to come up, but I am going to ask you to lift up your hand and and say, today's my day of salvation. So if you'd like to receive Jesus as your Savior, could you lift up your hand high so I can see it? Don't be afraid. Just lift it up. I see that. Anybody else? I see that back there. Anybody else? couple people. That's awesome. Go ahead and put your hands down. And pray this, pray this uh, in your heart after me. Basically repeat it after me. Jesus, come into my life. I ask you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Taking on my sin. And casting it away. I now want to live for you. So I give you my heart and my soul. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand. Some people receive Jesus today. Amen.